check out that shiny jewel sitting right here in the front of this 57 Chevy. Welcome to Two Guys Garage. You can see we've got a cool ride going yeah, on today. Yeah, man, the shoebox Chevys, the Tri-5s, the motherships of hot rod, and you can't look at this car and not think to yourself, cool. Yeah, I've always loved them. This guy's grown up with one his whole life. Yeah. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> you know what, we're gonna have a fun ride today. Stick around. All right, first things first, we've got our nice stroker small block making some serious power. Made it to our transmission, but they're sort of hanging out all along. These guys need some friends. Yeah, man, they do need some friends, and we have a couple of them. How about motor meet header? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're going to mock these up just so we can get the exhaust routed. So we're not going to get too crazy with gaskets and torquing all the bolts down, but if you want to grab uh, that. Yeah. Sort of creeper down there, slide under. This. You what got a bolt, up? and uh, I got the last spark plug here. So the first thing you want to do is pull all your plugs out because you'll end up smashing probably at least several of them. The ceramics just kind of feeding the headers up in there. Now one thing I've noticed pulling out the other ones is you can see here anti-seize is a good thing. Too much anti-seize could wreak havoc on your ignition. So make sure when you put it on your spark plugs, just get it on the threads, not on the strap like this tiny electrode or the ceramic. So. We'll have to get a new set or really try to clean those up well. Let me get my fastener. All right, let's see. Get this one started and, uh, all right, this one's rolling if you wanna get that back one. On we'll it. snug these up a little bit, throw the other side on and uh, we can work our way on the underside of the car and try to shoot out the back. I am exhaust man. Oh, exhaust man, I, I knew I smelled something funny, man. <laughs> Was that right. you? <laughs> no, no. Hey, we're back underneath our 57 Chevy, and unfortunately, eh, it's a little dirty. Uh, no, that's not dirt. <laughs> that's Got, crud, that's yeah. corrosion, <laughs> that's road grime, man. There's a lot of filth under here, but everything looks pretty solid. Just a few rusty bolts to fight here yeah. and there. This is all good times. This is a lot of good times under here. Uh, and check this out, from uh, Schaefer Classic Reproductions, we got ourselves an exhaust system, and this thing is great, man, I love it. Right out of the gate, I noticed one thing in particular different, because I own a 57, a lot of muffler shops, a lot of exhaust guys, we use these stock mounting brackets right here for exhaust, and what happens, you get a lot of vibration that travels through the frame, into the cab, and so forth. Well, the guys at Schaefer Classic Reproductions made a cool little bracket that uses the body mount, and that way you can get the exhaust, the muffler, back here, back towards the back of the car. So it eliminates a lot of that vibration and noise you're gonna get inside the cab of the car, puts it in the back. Really like that, man. All right, well, we're gonna do some trial fitting. Mm -hmm. First of all, anytime you're putting custom headers on, the mounting flange up at the front is always gonna be unique and different. So we're gonna have to make that battle as we've got everything else laid out. The well, second thing I noticed is we've got an aftermarket five-speed trans in the car, the whole assembly's been moved back about an inch, so we've got a custom cross member here that may end up being right in the flow of traffic. Can't have that. So let's feed this guy up See. over. Which up way? and over, there you go. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, there There's go. over. And we'll try fitting some stuff in here. All right, you wanna hook that over the, yeah. yeah. We got everything going on down here at once, perfect. There we go. Now if you can go forward. Oh, 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 here we go. There we are. All right, so as you can tell already, this is gonna cause us a problem. Yeah, so that's a nice piece. It actually was mounted pretty decent, but um, I don't think no matter what we put on here for exhaust, that thing is just right in the way. So uh, let's get ourselves a little bit mocked up here. I got the jack already into the trance because I can see we're gonna have issues. Let's rework this guy up here yep. and then we'll make our way forward. There you go. All right, still at our exhaust, man, making sure all the fit and finish on it is great. And something you'll kind of take note of, all the computer-controlled mandrel bending makes it really nice, guaranteed good flow. And I like the fit and finish on it, because anytime you add, like, headers, that's a modification. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No, no, there's, that's a great modification, too. And they give us a little bit of wiggle room in here, uh, which really helps. Yeah, because no header manufacturer from one to the other are going to give you the same pierce point, the same angle. Yeah. So what you want to do is get your full setup all the way back. Everything's like you want it. It's all mounted nice. And then you take the last piece here right. and you figure out it comes with an extra flange. And you can mark off one end or both ends and take right. a little sliver off. And uh, I'm going to mark around this guy here. 
I can make a nice clean bandsaw cut, and I might take a little off the back, but I'll, yeah. I'll get this fit up real quick. And uh, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll get this guy welded, bolted in nice and solid. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by Seatbelt Solutions, the safest seatbelt money can buy. All right, come on up for a sneak peek of the progress. All right, so we've got our exhaust all yeah. welded up here. We've got our new ends on it. Uh, this side's just taken off, so Willie can run some lines, which he'll show you in a second. Now, this is the cross member that somebody fabbed up yeah. to mount this new engine and trans transmission location. Had some problems, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good piece, real simple, except, you know, they took just an easy route on fitting this without really thinking about fitting all the other stuff, like yeah. exhaust. So we want to run through this area here. So we're just going to remake this piece, but we're going to put a kick up in it. We're gonna mount very similar on the frame rails, mount the pad of the transmission right here. So what I've done is, uh, you know, just bent up some welding rod and that'll go right up in here like this. Super easy to tweak back and forth, bend it, shape it. And I don't have to get super technical with my bends. I've got a decent guideline because I can kind of rotate it around. I can move it up and down and I'm gonna end up welding it right to my plate here. I left myself plenty of extra stock so let me take my little template without bending it and uh, take it over the bender start bending the real tube. Nice. Now while Kevin bends that up I'm gonna handle these brake lines. The cool part is the same guys that sent us the exhaust, Schaefer's, right? The guy started making fuel lines and brake lines in his garage at home. That's how his business started. That's the kind of American ingenuity we like to see. <laughs> so they sent us some nice little brake lines, new fuel lines as well. And whenever you put a dual exhaust system, right, especially on these old shoebox or Chevy, you want to you wanna take the brake line and the fuel line and run it on the outside portion of the frame rail. That way you keep away from all this heat that's coming off the exhaust. So these new fuel lines and brake lines they sent us are going to run right up through here. They're all fit and formed, custom bent, the pierce points are correct, so it makes it really simple, really easy to get the fuel and the brake fluid away from all the heat on the inside. So I get these mounted up, Kevin will get the trans mount mounted up, and this thing will be almost kind of buttoned up under here. I've got my cross member tube cut a little bit long, and I can lay my little pattern up here. I've got a center line. And you can work from one end, make your bends, and end up somewhere, but I like working from the center line if I can, depending on how complicated the bend. So this is my flat section. This is where I'm going to start to roll my bend up. So I've got it marked, and a little tip, uh, if you get a little parallel piece of thin stock or cardboard, you can wrap it around on itself, and it helps you square up kind of nicely so you can get a good line all the way around, so no matter how you orient your tube, you can look at your mark on the die for your setups. So we've got our radius die here. This is going to get pushed around with a hydraulic ram. The tube's going to get pushed into this like this. So, and then you got your die right here, your, your shoe, and that's going to drag on the tube. So you want to make sure you lube that up pretty good. But I think we're ready for our first bend. Show you how this works. Slide that guy in there. And your bend doesn't start at the beginning of the radius of this die. This one has a little notch. So line your line up pretty close to that and then we'll get our little clamp on here as soon as I get it wiggled in place drop this guy in lock it down and now I'll get myself a little reference angle or I can just kind of eyeball the bend and hold my little dude up here to get the angle and remember you can sneak up on it so you don't have to get it you know, knocked out first time around. So let me give this guy a little bit of juice here. And we start making some bends. Just about buttoned up on the fuel lines and the brake lines we got from Schaefer. Pretty cool stuff here. Got it on the outside of the rail. Keep it away from that heat. And my boy Kev looks like he's 
Doing pretty good on this transmission mount. Almost there, man. Yeah, you can see we got our little V-bar routed nice. around everything, nice and clearance to everything. We've got a little transmission mount here, so that guy will zip right up like so. And I can hold it there with the nut. And the tube's just actually wedged up in there, so I can move it around. I can kind of hold her like so. And I think I'm ready to tack this guy on. Oh, boy. And now uh, we're one step closer to dropping these little jack screws Dropping out of the way. With some fire in the hole. There we go. Hey guys, time for a tech tip. So let's talk oil and oil filters for a minute. Some things you probably want to save a couple bucks on when it comes to your car. Other things you shouldn't, especially with oil intervals getting so long. It used to be 3,000 miles, now it's 5,000 miles. According to my ex-wife, it's 30,000 miles. So let's talk oil filters. Hastings oil filters hold 50% more capacity in oil than the OE stuff. Another thing to notice is this spring right here. All right, a lot of guys will use a washer or a leaf spring mechanism. They use an actual coil spring. Now this is going to keep constant pressure on this element so you get contaminants that go through it and get picked up by the filter as opposed to around the filter, all right? So when it comes to oil filters, you're not going to skimp out on money. When it comes to oil, don't do it on oil filters either. Head to Federated Auto Parts, pick up the Hastings Premium Filters, all right? Good stuff from Hastings and Federated Auto Parts. Hey, welcome back. Now I'm inside the 57 Chevy. Underneath, we got pretty much everything buttoned up. We have a new exhaust on it. We redid the fuel lines and the brake lines, and Kevin built that pretty cool trans cross member brace. So I think it's pretty buttoned up under there. It just so happens, I found a, from Custom Auto Sound, a radio that will fit right into this dash. Now the great thing is, old school look, new school sound and functionality, which is great. I'll show you that in just a second. Gotta get this guy out. It's funny, man. Being a, uh, being a kid growing up with a dad, uh, a dad that had a 57 Chevy, albeit in parts in a barn, I never lost a race in that 57. Granted, I was like eight and I was racing, I was racing all kinds of cars. You ought to heard me in that barn sitting in the seat. <laughs> pretty cool stuff, man. I'm really close to these cars. So it's pretty cool to see one like this, that's just on its way to recovery. Uh, all right. So check out this behemoth of an old school AM radio. Now, in 1957, they didn't have FM radio. So you got really cool when you got this little band adapter that was in the glove box we found. Check out that tuning knob somewhere underneath here. <laughs> Who would imagine you would see something like this? Now the great thing about what we got from Custom Auto Sound is USA 630. Now this thing is super cool. All right, because in 1957, you didn't see things that said iPod. You didn't see things that say USB port. So you know you got all the functionality of something new, but yet on the face of it, it looks like it belongs in this 1957 sort of dashboard. So when you get in, it's going to follow all the, you know, old school patina look, but yet give you all that cool sound and ability to have things like your iPod, Bluetooth, and all that cool stuff. So I'm going to get this mounted up. And Kevin's got some viewer emails he's going to answer, so check that out. All right, we've really improved this car by making some great sounds. Well, he's got the stereo on the inside, we've got the exhaust coming out the backside, but there's one sound we want to get rid of, and that's that sort of chunking, grinding going on in the rear end. So we hooked up with nitro gear and axle, and we've got a complete set of everything. High quality axles, 1541H high quality steel. So these guys are going to replace those 50 some year old axles in the back. We also got ring and pinion gears, bearings, uh, we got our paint so we can get our, our matching on our mesh for our gears. They've got a lot of gear choices now where in the old days you only had sort of drag race options. But we're going to put a 336 gear in this car so we can go cruise, so we can go to car shows, maybe drive the thing across country. Now last time we did a gear change we had some questions on bearings. So one of those was preload. Now preloads, just like you do on, let's say your, your hub on your wheel, right? You're gonna tighten those bearings so there's just a certain amount of drag, right? And you're gonna shim this thing in the housing 
or you're going to turn your adjusters. So there's just the right amount of drag so the bearings last forever, they don't make noises. You're going to do the same thing in your pinion gear. Now the other question was, how do you get those bearings off? Now there's a couple of different ways. You can use the guillotine. So this guy will slide right under here like so. And however you can kind of get in there to wrestle it, you'll tighten this guy up and then maybe put it in the bearing press, press down here and try to pull this bearing race off. Well, Nitro Gear's got a great tool set here. This guy's pretty cool and it's real simple. You don't need a press. This guy will slide right under the bearings. The collar goes on top right after you've dropped in, you know, the pusher so you can push on the inside. This guy will slide right in there like that and we'll try to capture him. There we go. All that good stuff. Just got to get the collar down and I'm ready to zip this guy off with the impact and pull that bearing right off. All right, it's that easy. Well, I wish the rest of it was that easy. We got a lot of leg work to do. We're going to pull that whole rear end apart, throw these axles, seals and everything in there. But in the meantime, we're going to take a break. For more information about anything you've seen in today's show, check out GACTV.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. Hey, welcome back to the break room. Yeah. Quick automotive stat. We're all so, familiar with emissions testing. Yeah. 50% of all failures that go back to the dealer, improperly installed or a bad gas cap. But it's just a gas cap. I know, but <laughs> it's an amazing, important, critical part of your emission system. Yeah, it really is, man. There's a ton of valving, especially in these stant uh, gas caps. If you look at it, ton of valving in here so that vapor doesn't get released and so forth. And even the, the seals, you know, because E85 chews up a lot of seals and so yep. forth. They have the proper seals, proper valving in here, proper colors as well. E85, diesel, the regular ones. Right. And because they're an OE supplier, they've got all the safety features in there. So breakaway groove. So if you get side impact, you flip over, you're not spilling yeah. gas, you're not catching on fire. It's got lost motion. That's always so, good. Not yeah. So the lost motion is going to release some of that pressure so it doesn't, yeah. you know, squirt you in the face. So make sure you got plenty of safety. Make sure your emissions are up to snuff. Yep. So check out Stamp. Make sure your gas cap is good to go. I'm talking about time savers, man. Check this guy out. It's yeah. great for getting up in tight spaces, man. Uh -huh. You put a little ratchet on there. You're not doing the one click you can actually swing that sucker around. Yeah, from TR Tools, it's our Tight Reach Pro, and this thing really is a time saver and a knuckle saver in case you're, you know, you need them for sandwiches or something. Yeah, because otherwise you're trying to reach up in some of these tight spaces. <laughs> yeah. What's cool is, I mean, it's a great oh. gift idea, but maybe you want to think about not just one, but two, because you can stack them. Mm -hmm. You can throw an impact wrench on them because they're super durable. So you can Come get around on. corners, you can get up in tight spots. Dude, that's handy. Yeah, they got the quarter inch version. And they even have an adapter now, which is cool. This guy can slide in here, pop it in, and you can use your favorite bit, whether it's a Phillips, Phillips or a Hex, you know, or Hex a 12 bolt, whatever. Torx, you name it. So Whew. check them out. It's TR Tools. It's their tight reach extension wrench. Yeah. Awesome thing. You know, unfortunately, we've all had some sort of fuel issue. Yeah. Whether it's just trying to get that lawnmower started or old hot rod. Or you got like an E85 car that loves to pull that moisture into the tank. Yeah, corrosion issues, storage issues. Well, we've got a you know, solution for you. It's the Startron Enzyme Fuel Treatment. Look, it's really simple how this works. You grab a bottle, you open it up, you pour it in, and you tune up your fuel. A lot of people may tune up the motor, but when's the last time you tuned the fuel up? Right, so you're going to get more performance. You're going to get easier starting. You're going to stabilize the fuel for storage. So it's a great way to hit all those issues you got with fuel systems. It's the Startron Enzyme Fuel Treatment. If you're rolling around on any sort of newer vehicle, you've yeah. got a tire pressure monitoring system. <laughs> great for safety and getting that fuel economy, but you know, just like anything else, they're prone yeah. to wear out, they're prone to have issues, you got to do maintenance. Well, that's where the Tech 500 from Bartek comes in to just save the day and make it easy. Yeah, it's a lot like the Tech 400, but it's got a lot of new bells and whistles and hi-fi stuff. For example, inductive charging. You just set the pad right on that and it charges itself. It's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth capable. Every bell and whistle you can imagine to make all those TPMS diagnostic stuff a lot easier. Yeah, you just go around, you scan your sensors, you can talk to the body module, you can reprogram, and because it's wireless, you can send all that information to a fact sheet for your customer you to go. make things easy. That's from Bartex, the Tech 500. Check it out. 
And how about that old shoebox Chevy we had in the day, man? No TPMS stuff needed for that. You just get in it, smash it. That's what I love about it, man. That's always been one of my favorite rides, yeah. that era car. You know, it's kind of the mothership of hot rods, man. Oh, absolutely. It's a full-on classic. Yeah. I can't wait to get that thing out on the road and go cruise around. I know. Pick up some milkshakes, some french fries, <laughs> scatter them around the seat cushions. No you know. doubt. Well, enjoy it, man. We enjoyed our time with you today. We're out of it, though, so you guys have a good one. We'll see you next time. See you guys.